everyone. This is three questions with Michelle Krell. There we go. It rhymes. Michelle told me. It rhymes. All right. I am. I am so excited to have Michelle. I actually can. I. I was with. Can I say it right? Owatonna. I met you yeah. in Owatonna, right? And hey, yeah. I, that was like 2019, which is like what five years ago but in covid years it's like 20 years ago <laughs> right so hey owatana so, shout out there too but uh michelle is actually the uh, i'm make sure the executive director of the minnesota elementary school principal association i am so excited because i'm finally coming out there to work with you all this has been it works michelle you know this for 10 years <laughs> right? Yep. I've heard it. You said it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I've been, I've been asked, I've been asked for the last 10 years and then they're just like, nah, <laughs> nah, we'll get someone else. So well, we finally, knew. this was finally, the year. This finally, was the year for you. Finally, I made the cut. So I'm so excited, right? Like just so <laughs> many things have changed since I was first asked, but who knows, who knows? I, I guess I shouldn't say that, you know, I'll be out there because February is a long way away. Stop. Yeah, right. No, we'll see you in February and we're looking it. forward to it. I can't awesome. wait. I can't wait. And I've been oh. to Minnesota so many times. It's such an amazing state. And I always decide, and not weather wise, it's just, it's very Canada like. Very Canada. Right? But just the, just the warmth of the people are absolutely amazing. Every time I come there, I just have very fond memories of all the people I've connected with there over the years. So um, we're going to do three questions here and we're going to change it up a little bit. But hey, I, I, and I'm going to ask you a little bit about this later. Like, how has it been? And this is not one of the three questions. How has it been this new role? Like, how do you like this new role working with principals, supporting them throughout the state? How's it been so far? And I know it's elementary and I think some middle school. Um, how's that role been? It's been absolutely amazing. Like, I am so excited and grateful to be the executive director of MESPA because I think it's so important to, to support our principals across the state. And, you know, we have 1,100 members in MESPA and um, to be able to help, I, I would say being a principal is the best gig I ever had. And so now the impact of being able to support them through all of the different challenges that they might have, the professional development that they have, I can be a visionary for, you know, what, what should education, what should leadership look like in Minnesota? So it's, it, I, it's a dream job. Uh, when I was a principal, I was very active in MESPA. And so I feel like my heart was here always because it's very much a grassroots organization that, you know, you network, you have this collegiality, you know, cause being a principal can be really lonely. And if you don't have your network or you don't have your phone, a friend, you don't have any of that. Um, it, it's really tough to do this job well. And so I, I, I'm ex I, it's been so amazing to be able to help support principals and help create that network for them so that they can be successful and, and it can be the best gig they ever had. Yeah. And principal, like the principal role is like so paramount. And like, I do think it's one of the most important roles in education in the sense that you have the most authority closest mm -hmm. to kids. Yep. And I know that's like a weird thing to say, and I'm not saying like teachers aren't the most important. I'm just saying like it, and I, I made this analogy in what makes a great principal that a lot of times being a principal is like being a referee that if you suck, everybody knows, right? Everyone notices you. And if you're awesome, the game just flows, right? And you don't necessarily get the credit and that's unfortunate. Now I will say you won the 2012 MESPA leadership award. You won the national distinguished principal. Um, you won an outstanding set. You have already, just those three, you have already won three more awards than I've ever won. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right? I don't know if you've won more, but with those three, you've won at least three more. So very yeah. funny. No, it's not funny. It's a little sad. I never, I never win you anything. Be recognized by your colleagues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like even, I don't, I haven't even won like, you know, like a, you know, one of the ticket things, you know, and someone win door prizes. Like I haven't won anything. No so. raffle winning. Nothing, Not even nothing, so. oh, in, in Minnesota, you might win a meat raffle or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Don't Google meat raffle. Just giving you a heads up there. So I don't know what that is. I don't want to know. Oh, oh my gosh. I should explain what it is. You like should. You go to a bar sure. and you throw... 
you, for now you buy a ticket and you might win some steaks or you might win some Eat. hamburger. All That's right. what we do for Minnesota, you know? Meat raffles. Here we go. All right. Meat uh, raffle. You're going to be the head of the Meat Raffle Association in Minnesota one day. All right. So, okay. So not only did you, not only were you at Central Office, not only were you principal, uh, you've also taught, obviously, um, and we, we'll get more into the principalship uh, very, very soon. But when you think about, you know, great teachers that you've either worked with, you had as a student, because I know you said this to me before we even started recording that you knew you always wanted to be a teacher, which is like, again, probably why you won awards I didn't, because I was like, last second, I'm like, I don't know what else I'm going to do. So why, like, when you think of a great teacher, who's someone you think of and why? You know, I had a lot of great teachers. So I grew up in a small town. Blooming Prairie, home of the awesome Blossoms, and um, had a lot hey. of amazing teachers. Awesome Blossom. Great, right, awesome that Blossoms. That's isn't that like right. From Chili's? That's right. Isn't that like Chili's, the awesome Blossom? Isn't that where that came from, too? Oh, yeah. No, we were long before that. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. Awesome Blossoms. All right. All right. Um, you know, I had great teachers, you know, and I think when you when you come from a small town, everybody cares about each other, and... Um, but I have to say, though, I had two aunts that were teachers, my aunt Bonnie and my aunt Kathleen, and um, they weren't in my district, they weren't in my school, but I watched them and, you know, I'd help my aunt Bonnie correct papers on the weekends or go help put up bulletin boards or things like that. And and I it just knew from a very young age that I was going to become a teacher and and I aspired to be that and and I was motivated and dedicated. And um, so, you know, I think it's a, it's about the fact that I could see the impact. You think about all the great teachers and the impact that they made um, in the lives of people. And I just wanted to be that. I wanted to make a positive impact. My, my mission was to make, make a difference in the lives of kids because, you know, young impressionable lives can be molded and shaped and there can be this hope for the future for them. So I always knew I wanted to do it, but I think it was, it was because of a lot of very important individuals, but probably because of my aunts. All right. Let's give it up to your aunts. <laughs> Just so you know, I say aunt, you say aunt. So I don't know if it's a Minnesota, Canada thing that's going on right now, but. You don't I don't really have a Minnesota accent either. So. <laughs> well, we're not going to talk about that. So <laughs> Minnesota Canadian accents, a little bit similar, by the way. Right. We're like a little bit. Minnesota's kind of Canada. You know this, right? It's a little that Canada. Yeah. Well, it's not even that far. It just is very, it's very Canadian. It's the weather. It's the people. Yeah. So I really think about that. Now I'm going to kind of just jump into the next question and I, I'm going to modify it a little bit. Uh, Cause usually I ask about administrators. We're going to ask specifically about principals because you and I both know this, that, you know, your aunts probably had great principals because a lot of times to be a, a really great teacher, um, you need support of really great administrators. And it's not that you can't be a great teacher if you have a bad principal, but often you can see a regression in some teachers or they just leave to somewhere else because they get fed up as they should, to be honest with you. Like, you know, if you had a, a bad principal, people tend to leave it. It's like any other workplace that, you know, people typically don't leave, you know, their job, they leave bad leaders. And I think that's something that's really important. So. Typically I ask this about an administrator, but if you think about a great principal and obviously, cause you've won so many awards, <laughs> by the way, so many awards. I just listed three, three you're, it's three and oh, if this is a competition, I'd be, okay. I'd be shut out by the way. So yeah. when you think of a great principal, who's someone you think of and why? You know, I think that, um, I, I would say that the principal that I had when I was in my teaching career in Oatana. So I taught, I taught in Medford and I taught in Oatana and um, Steve Stansberry was his name. And I think he was a great principal because he made, um, he built strong relationships and he made connections and he saw things in people that they might not have seen him themselves, you know? And he, you know, he was a person that tapped me on the shoulder to say, Hey, I, I think you should be a principal. And I thought, I want to, I love teaching. I have a plan to be a teacher my entire life. And, um, and, and then I started to think about like the leadership roles I was taking just naturally and how, like, maybe I know I can make an impact on the 25 students in my classroom, but maybe I can make an impact on 500 students. And he really, 
he saw that in me and he, he pushed me to do that. And I think, um, you know, that that's important. I call, you know, I call those people impact players. We have impact players in our lives all the time and they could be impact players that are impact players that, um, that teach you a lesson positively or negatively. And so I've had both really good principles and, and not so good principles. And, and I think that, um, I would say that, you know, being able to tap me on the shoulder and push me to do great things and, but being a good role model for the work that needed to be done, the high expectations, um, you know, being able to support people. And so I, I always aspired to, you know, be that leader that put relationships first, you know, relationships matter. No significant learning happens without significant relationships. And so that's important and that builds strong culture. And so I, I learned a lot from Steve and Stanford. And that's why you won at least three awards. Right? So I, I'm saying, you know, okay, it's funny. Um, when you talk about this, when you talk about the principle you're talking about, I read this quote this morning before, before I even talked to you. So I was just like, this is like so pertinent to what, or relevant to what we're talking about. It's from Adam Grant's book, uh, Hidden Potential. Absolutely love it. So when we value people, there's nothing more reward rewarding than finding a diamond in the rough. Our job isn't to apply the pressure that brings out their brilliance is to make sure we don't overlook those who've already faced that pressure and recognize their potential to shine. And obviously, you know, that was seen in you, your, your potential of something. And like in what makes a great principal, which I know you've read and really appreciate the support you've given. Thanks for, thanks. If you're watching on YouTube, she's holding it up right now. So um, the, the commonality in what you said compared to like what I've heard over the years doing this process is often, and it's not just administrators, it's teachers too. They're often like, they saw something in me that I didn't necessarily see in myself. And they like help you develop that too, which I think is really, really powerful. Now, typically I ask this question and you and I talked about this before, you know, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? But because, you know, I'm coming out there, we're working principles, your role is focused specifically on principles. And I, I think this is the first time I've ever asked this question specifically. So this is like a, this is a first timer here. So if you can go back to your very first year as a principal, what advice would you give to yourself and why? Um, I think it's slow to go fast. And I think that relationships matter. Like every relationship that you build um, is important. And every interaction you have is remembered because you are being judged from the first day you walk in the door and you have, you have less than a year, I would say less than a month sometimes to truly be somebody that they're going to, they're going to be somebody that I want to, I want to go alongside that person and, you know, follow them as a leader, or I don't want to. And I think it's so important. And I think it's being able to build those relationships, being able to connect with people, learn as much as you can. You know, I always say, you, you know, every building I went into, I did interviews with every single staff member from the teachers to the custodian, to the secretary, to the nutrition services. Like I met with every one of them for 30 minutes and I found out, you know, what do you value in this school? What's most important to you? What are things that need to be improved? And what are your expectations of me? And those four questions laid the whole framework for what I did as a leader. I knew and, and I learned so much about the people and it's about making connections beyond being their, their instructional leader, or their principal. It's about, you know, making your daily rounds every single morning and saying good morning to every single classroom, every single teacher, being able to tap kids on the shoulder that maybe had a rough day the day before and be able to say, Hey, you know, I know you got, to, I, you got this today, like have a great day. And being able to recognize and notice every single person in your building makes all the difference in the world. And not just asking them about school, asking about how's your family doing? How was your niece's wedding this weekend? Whatever it is, like we need to get to know people as a leader, not just as employees, but as people too, because everybody comes with their own internal, who they are as a person. And when we can make those connections and build those you know, those relationships and we build a positive culture, anything is possible. Like people will go through walls for you as a leader um, to make sure that they're doing the right thing for kids. Did you, read my, did you read my blog post this morning? Did you read it? No. Why? Oh, no. It's like you could have wrote it based oh. on what you said, right? So like, it's, it's amazing. So I actually talked about, I was in Bryan schools in Arkansas. Um, and they did this really amazing thing. They actually, you know, I've seen students, you know, open up the date, which is awesome. I, it's one of my favorite things when I was there, but they actually had a staff choir 
and they brought staff from everybody and i started crying i was like i don't know anybody here why am i crying and it was just it just was such a celebration of like their humanity and i talked about how and then one, one of the things i say in the blog post is i'm not an educator that happens to be a person i'm a person that happens to be an educator like you have to remember that central that central purpose there too so I think that really, really matters how we connect, how we, you know, really value people. And one of the pieces of advice I always give um, to principals, and I think you did this really, really well. If people, if you go into a new building and people think you're trying to fix them, they, they will fight you nonstop. Mm -hmm. But if people know they're valued, they'll grow alongside you. I think that's something that you really emulate, which is why you've won so many awards. Listen, I listen, and I, I'm, I, I'm kind of joking, but I'm not, because like obviously you're absolutely incredible, and what a blessing Mespa is to to have you. I'm so excited to see you there, and I, I, I kind of feel like we should co keynotes. I can just kind of like throw it over to you, right? You know, that's my dream someday. You know, it's to be a keynote speaker. So what are you talking about maybe this is the year. Maybe we're doing a co keynote. That'd be great. So there we go. I would love to. That would love that. So. Everyone, make sure you connect with Michelle. She's absolutely amazing. Uh, you can also see her. She's going to be on. We're going to talk more about Vespa, some of the things that are happening there. But Michelle, thanks so much for being on the pod. On the, oh, my. Look, I'm getting a Minnesota accent on the pod. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, anyways, thanks for listening, everyone. Michelle, thanks for your time. Have a wonderful day.